Hello, my name is Stephen, and this is Faith Ministries. In a previous video, we had a look at the Textus Receptus, or in English, it means the received text. And it all came back to, goes back to a man called Erasmus in the 1500s, who published a Greek New Testament, which was a rather radical thing to do, considering that the only New Testament and Old Testament they had at the time was written in Latin called the Vulgate. Um, but he came out one with a Greek New Testament, several versions of it in 1516, 1519, 1522, 1527, and 1535. And this was later then published by several other different people over the years, but it became the foundation for translation into English, into French, into German, Italian Bibles, etc., uh, for about 250, 300 years. This video, we're going to have a look at what are some of the Bibles, what are 21 Bibles that have used this Greek New Testament originally put together by Erasmus and these other publishers. Now, some of these Bibles, which I'll mention, we've already had videos done upon them, and I'll have the links below so that you can go there and check them out yourself if you haven't already seen them. Number one. So we have the Tyndale New Testament in 1526. Number two. We then have the Coverdale Bible in 1535. Number three. The Matthew's Bible in 1537. Number four. The Great Bible, which came out in 1539. Number five. The Geneva Bible in 1560. Number six. We have the Bishop's Bible in 1568. Number seven. And then the well-known King James Version, which came out in 1611, plus other different versions of it that came on later. Number eight. Following this was the Quaker Bible in America, 1764. Number nine. And also in America, there was the Webster Bible in 1833. Number 10. Then there was Young's Literal Translation, which is used by people even today, 1862. Number 11. And then the Julia E. Smith translation of 1876. But then in 1881, a couple of men called Westcott and Hort, they published a Greek New Testament that was, they brought together other Greek manuscripts, other Greek texts that Erasmus and the others hadn't, didn't have at the time. And it proved over the years to them to become more popular than the Textus Receptus or the received text. So then there was quite a period where there were a lot of Bibles that came out, but which didn't use the Textus Receptus. Number 12. And so the previous one, as I said, was Julia E. Smith translation in 1876. But then we have to wait until 1982 when they did the New King James version. Number 13. Then came along the literal translation of the Bible in 1985. Number 14. Then the easy to read version in 1989. Number 15. The scriptures, 1993. Number 16. The Mickelson Clarified Translation in 2008. Number 17. The Divine Name, King James Version, 2011. Number 18. Also in 2011 was the Names of God Bible. Number 19. And then in 2014, the modern English version. 
number 20. And then in 2016, tying in with the original Matthew's Bible, they brought out a new Matthew Bible, which was the first part of what the New Testament called the October Testament. Number 21. And then finally in 2020, the literal standard version was also using the Textus Receptus. So there you have it, 21 Bibles. I know there are other partial Bibles out there and other uh, types of Bibles that you may know about that have used the Textus Receptus. If you do know some, put them in the comments below. But there are 21 Bibles or New Testaments that have used the Textus Receptus both back in prior to the 1900s, but then more recently they've brought out Bibles where they've used the Textus Receptus as the, the Greek format for their New Testament to go off as publishing English Bibles. I hope you enjoyed this short video as we had a look at 21 Bibles that use the Textus Receptus or the Received Text. And if you do like it, please like, subscribe and share. Until next time, God bless.